Taking your site live can be as easy as just smashing the publish button, but depending on what you've built, it's important to choose the right site plan. You don't need to make any decisions yet, but in this lesson, we'll take a high level look at the considerations you'll wanna make when choosing a plan for your site. Let's start with the site plan you're already on, the free plan. I'm sure you've discovered by this point in the course that you haven't had to pay anything. In fact, you can build and test as many projects as you like, completely free. And you can even publish your site for free at any moment with the publish button in the top right corner of the screen. You'll just be limited to a Framer subdomain and have a little made in Framer badge until you decide to upgrade your plan. But even for free, you can currently create up to a thousand pages and 10 CMS collections. And on top of that, you get the security of a free SSL certificate, a monthly bandwidth allowance of 100 megabytes, and up to a thousand visitors per month, which is often enough for small personal projects, portfolios, coming soon pages, and of course, framer templates. And if you happen to hit your monthly visitor limit, we'll let you know. You'll get a heads up via email with the details, and from there, you can decide if it's time to upgrade or not. With the free plan, you'll also see an upgrade button at the bottom of the canvas. But no matter what, you can always go to the site settings and click the plans tab to see all of your options, what they cost, and what's included. You'll also see if you've already built something that exceeds the limits of a plan, which helps take out some of the guesswork. Then it's just a matter of clicking subscribe and following the steps to complete the payment process. Easy peasy. If you're upgrading from a lower tier paid plan to a higher tier plan within a billing period, the system considers the amount you've already paid for the current period. So you'll automatically be credited for the unused portion of your current subscription. On that note, rather than talking through the exact plans and pricing of today, which could of course be different by the time you watch this video, I think it would be more valuable to give you an overall sense of what factors to consider when choosing which plan to upgrade to. The first thing to consider is hosting limits. Take a look at how many pages, CMS collections, locales, days of version history, and form submissions each plan has to offer. And limits like max upload size, bandwidth, and total storage. Then there are some features that are either included or not, depending on which plan you choose. I'll break a few of them down. One is draft pages, which let us work on individual pages without publishing them until we decide they're ready. Another is staging, which allows us to test and review changes to our site at a separate URL before deciding to deploy and go live. Then there's site password protection, which lets us lock down an entire site so unauthorized users can't access any content, and redirects to take control of routing traffic from old URLs to new ones. If not having one of these is a deal breaker, then it'll be that much easier to rule out the plans that won't work for you. There are also things like UTM tracking for forms, additional CDN locations, custom proxies, and even more when you get into enterprise territory. And when you do move your way up into business and enterprise plans, you'll find that support and training get ramped up too. And naturally, sites on enterprise plans get improvements across the board for limits and hosting, including a premium CDN and custom proxy. Enterprise plans also have the option of custom billing and MSAs, SSO and access controls, and SOC 2 and ISO 27001 certifications. The last factor to consider is how many editors you'll want collaborating in your workspace or projects. As the owner of a site project, your editor seat is always included for free. Additional editors are billed per editor per month and can be added at any time. We'll of course notify you when an editor is added to your billing and you won't be charged until the next renewal date of your monthly billing cycle. Just note that editors will be charged and limited according to the highest tier site plan in the workspace. And there you have it. Now you know how much Framer gives you for free and you've got a pretty good idea of what to consider when choosing a plan for your site. Again, we're always adding new features, so for the most up-to-date information, be sure to check our pricing page or the pricing found directly within Framer itself. That's it for this one. I'll see you in the next one where we'll look at publishing and connecting a custom domain.